This is a painterly shader I wrote based on the famous impressionist painter Claude Monet. It can be applied to images, video, and soon even games. But what makes Claude Monet's style so unique, and what does it take to mimic his style in a fragment shader? In this video, I'll walk you through my research and process in creating the shader, then we'll apply it to some subjects that Monet might have also chosen. Claude Monet in the 1850s was already a talented young artist with some art training, with a supportive mother, and surrounded by fellow artists. What made him special though was his unique vision of what painting could be. Much like how a graphics programmer can become obsessed with simulating light in a 3D world, Monet was obsessed with how natural light from a subject interacted with the viewer. His focus was on how he could accurately describe not what the brain says we see, but what the eye is literally seeing. This idea of capturing just the light of the subject was groundbreaking and became a major pillar of Impressionism. If we want to apply Monet's philosophy to a shader though, where do we even start? I have a few videos on the Voronoi algorithm in case you want a deeper explanation. The basic idea though is that the algorithm lets us draw shapes in an organic looking grid without any discontinuities. Because it's based on a grid, we can use the grid cell coordinates to sample the color in an image and apply that color to the shape that we draw in the cell. That means we could do this, and very efficiently. So what sort of paint stroke shapes should we try to draw? In this first painting, Houses of Parliament, if we look at the sky we can see what I believe is an example of scumbling. That's when you put a bit of paint on a dry brush and sort of scribble on the canvas loosely over the previous coat of dried paint. Monet did this a lot with clouds and to add atmosphere and texture to his work. Two other techniques we can see in this painting are long aggressive strokes on the building and short Van Gogh-like strokes in the water. Let's just start with these. The paint strokes will be made using signed distance functions, or SDFs. In case you aren't familiar, SDFs are math functions that describe shapes based on distances of all points in a coordinate space to the center. To describe a paint stroke, I start with a box or rectangle SDF. I adjust the shape and gradient of the SDF using textures and math functions like sine waves until I get something that looks like an actual brush stroke. This is a UI I created in Shader Toy with some variables to control the stroke shape. We have a dryness variable that determines how quickly the paint paint of a stroke will stop showing paint, which could be good for scumbling. We have noise to make things look more organic, a brush shape which pushes the ends of the box out for variety, sine waves to get different arc shapes for water or clouds, and variables to control the width and height of the stroke. In other paintings by Monet, you can see when short strokes are taken to the extreme, you get a style known as pointillism. He is using that here in the trees, and we can recreate that now easily. In this last painting, Irises in Monet's Garden, there is a good example of how Monet uses impasto. Impasto is where enough paint is used that it leaves visible, raised areas of paint on the canvas. Monet used impasto to add texture and depth to specific elements of his work, like flowers, trees, or clouds. To get that, we need a bit more math. We can estimate the height gradient using the central difference method on the x and y axis. The height in question will be the distance function's brightness. Then I set up a 2D lighting model using the gradient as a normal map. The result is a realistic bump map and lighting effect. Now that we have Voronoi and stroke shapes, we can hard code a number of stroke types and see them all clearly when making adjustments. Some have more rounded ends, some have more curving, some have more impasto than others. We've created a paint stroke vocabulary. It would be sick if we could apply different strokes to different parts of the painting depending on what object was being painted, but how on earth can we do that? Computer vision? Well, here is some advice from Monet himself. When you go out to paint, try to forget what objects you have before you, a tree, a house, a field, or whatever. Merely think, here is a little square of blue, here an oblong of pink, here a streak of yellow. If we take this advice too literally, we would write a shader that just duplicates the image pixel by pixel. To make a painterly shader, we need some sort of feature detection, but we, the artist, still need to do the observing and the painting. So how about we say, if the shader finds a feature, like a color, at a pixel, then we, the artist, will choose what sort of stroke technique to use there, and our choices will be based on our observations of real life and of Monet's style. Now with just RGB, you can detect if a pixel is greenish and segment an image to get all the grass and then paint the grass, but what about colors that don't fit in red, green, or blue? Or what if we want to separate yellowish green from brownish green or vivid green from dull green? RGB isn't organized in a way that lets you easily isolate a range of color values. The best color space for this will have just the hue and a continuous spectrum like a rainbow. 
That way, we can check if a color's hue is within a range of hues. The HSV color space lets us do that, and as well, it lets us do the same for saturation and for brightness or value. Here is a function that converts from RGB to HSV, and here is a user interface I cooked up in Shader Toy. The first six sliders let us threshold hue, saturation, and value, so we can check if a color is within some range in each of those values. I wrote a function that takes the threshold values from the UI and applies them to an image so that it only returns colors within the threshold. This way I can play around and find important bounds, and I can hard code those proper bounds to detect each type of feature. If I do this based on the main elements of an image like grass, sky, etc., I can fully segment the image. It gets even cooler. Two commenters on my Van Gogh shader suggested I find a way to detect faces so that I can paint them with more detail. The non-AI method of face detection I found is too slow for real time in a shader. What we can do though is detect skin. I found two papers that use HSV. The one I understood best simply adjusts the threshold to find skin colors. Humans have a wide variety of skin tones, of course, so we need to tweak this based on what skin tones we want. Also, if there's anything else in the scene that is close enough in color, it will also be detected as skin. Those are two very small prices to pay, though, for free skin or face detection. So let's put everything together now. The shader takes in an image, segments it based on the features we've defined, and for each cell in our Voronoi function, we pass the segment ID along with other important information to the stroke function. The function has an if block that chooses the stroke parameters based on the segment ID and then draws the stroke. It also mixes the height of the stroke, this frame, with the last frame, and at the end of the shader we create the impasto effect. Here is the result of all this work, but for a number of reasons, this first result actually looks quite bad. It was something to do with the lighting function and also the textures I used, but I couldn't figure out exactly how to get it looking the way I wanted. I ended up stealing some code from my previous Van Gogh shader, which made strokes that were cleaner. After a lot more tweaking, I ended up with this, which we will apply to a bunch of things very soon. So far in this video, I've used some fundamental math concepts without explaining them in depth. A number of you have mentioned enjoying my videos but not understanding the math. If you want to build a good foundation for projects like this, you should check out today's sponsor, Brilliant. Brilliant is a learning platform based on the knowledge that we learn best by doing. They have thousands of interactive lessons on math, data analysis, AI, and programming. What I love about Brilliant is how it's set up to help me build a daily learning habit. While learning about feature detection and segmentation, I found and completed a short lesson about clustering on Brilliant, then I got to see my score on the leaderboard go up and an email congratulating me, so I did another lesson. Having a system that keeps you learning daily will give you a massive advantage in the long term. What I want to share with you today is Brilliant's newly updated math courses. It will help you establish a strong foundation in algebra and build on that to master calculus and more. You will discover algebra that you already know but just don't realize yet. You will strengthen your logical reasoning and problem solving skills with lessons that aren't too hard but also not too easy. And lastly, the mathematical intuition and fluency you will gain from the visual nature of Brilliant's lessons will definitely help you in the next project you decide to start. Try everything Brilliant has to offer for free for a full 30 days. Visit brilliant.org slash 28 or scan the QR code on screen. Or you can click in the link in the description. You'll also get 20% off on an annual premium subscription when you sign up. Thank you Brilliant for sponsoring this video. So we have a basic painterly shader, let's take a minute to apply it to the sort of subjects Monet would use. He painted all outdoors which was called en plein air painting and focus on natural light. So let's choose some outdoor scenes with an emphasis on natural light. Monet's scenes often had trees, flowers, rivers, female models, cathedrals, and trains. So I found some related images on Unsplash, segmented them, and adjusted the brush strokes for each. Here is a daytime cathedral or castle scene. The impasto is way more pronounced on the actual building. I also have the grass rotated horizontally to match the smoothness of the grass in the image. The sky is nice and flat with a bit of impasto in the clouds as well. The sweet field scene is more basic with only four or five separate segments. I have the wheat strokes more vertical. The clouds have more impasto. One thing I forgot to mention is there are two layers of the effect. One layer for the low detail areas and one smaller one for the high detail areas. The areas are found using a hacky edge detection method with MIP mapping. The one I'm most proud of is this house scene which has the most detailed segmentation. The whole thing almost looks like a sort of embroidery. The impasto clouds have a metallic shine. The trees and grass has a natural movement, the water uses curved strokes and it contrasts the grass which is sitting upright. The whole scene feels alive like a windy day at the end of summer. I feel like you could predict which images would look best based on how many unique but meaningful segments you can make out of it. Here are a few with only four or so segments, which with reshade you would be able to do the segmentation part of this much faster and save presets, so you could have presets for different levels or areas of a game.
Right now, our shader is taking the color it sampled and applying it as paint to our canvas. Monet observed though that often, if we look closely, we aren't seeing the colors we think we are, but at some point along the way to us, the light is mixing. So to recreate this effect, he would paint unmixed complementary colors close to each other. Then, when we look at the painting from a distance, those colors will blend in a way that more closely mimics how natural light would work. To get a complementary color, we can do a hue shift, which means we convert to HSV and add or subtract 0.5 from the hue using Fract to wrap the result. That gives us a complement in terms of hue only. I wrote a conditional to randomly shift each stroke color either up or down. I noticed Monet's complements are much more subtle, so I'm toning it down. Altogether, we have this, and the word that comes to my mind is dazzling, or at least lively. Try squinting your eyes and comparing the image with the complementary colors and with out. For me, the one with complementary colors actually does seem more like what outdoor light would look like. It almost feels like it's capturing the limitations of the human eye, which a camera doesn't. Now, if I had more time, I would have looked more into shadow detection because shadows were an important part of Monet's work. I also didn't have time to turn it into a reshade, but with video of a game, we can get an idea of what that might look like. Compared to the Van Gogh shader I previously made, I would say this is more robust technically. I've solved the ghosting issue where moving things took too long to be redrawn. There is a large variety of strokes since we spent half the video on that, and the segmentation also opens up a lot of possibilities for future projects. Overall, I'd say this is closer to Monet's style Style, then my Van Gogh shader was to the Van Gogh's style, although both can be improved. A number of you left some really good comments on the Van Gogh video, which is how this video happened, so thank you for those. If you have more suggestions or feedback on this one, I'd love to hear that too, and hopefully use it in the next iteration. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.